Peep, what up? How you doing, peeps? Good to see ya. Peep. 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 Hi, friends. It's good to see you. Can you believe it's Peep 46? I'm excited, and I'm glad you're here. And today, I have an interesting topic to talk to you about for Peep 46, Pastor Eric's Enjoyable Points. Peep, we're going to talk about deference. What? Well, here I want you to see it. Here it is. Deference. Yes, well, deference is limiting my freedom so that I do not offend the tastes of those around me. Now, that, even that definition is a little crazy, so I want to help talk about what deference means. And first, I want to tell you what the opposite of deference is. You probably don't know, but the opposite of deference is preference. Have you ever heard preference? Like, my preference, what I want, what I prefer. So preference is thinking about you. Deference is thinking about others. So that's the biggest difference. Preference is me. Deference is you. Okay? So I want to think about some of that. So preference is the things I would choose first. Well, I have lots of preferences, just like you do. One of my preferences is in the way that I dress. I prefer to untuck my shirt. I don't want to tuck it in, but sometimes I do because I show deference, but my preference is to untuck it. Shoes, well, I prefer shoes that slip on. I don't want to take the time to lace up shoes. I know how to tie my shoes, but I would rather slip them on. It's so much faster and I think more comfortable. That's my preference. What about pizza? Well, we all have pizza preferences. My preference is sausage with black olives. Mmm, doesn't that sound good? Maybe not to you, but that's my preference. So the list goes on and on and on. We all have preferences. But deference puts aside my preference so that others feel accepted, special, respected. So that's what deference is, to set aside what I want to give you what you want. Now, for example, today for this Peep 46, I dress like this because I thought it's more acceptable for a peep to dress like this. But my preference would be to wear pajamas. See, doesn't this look much more comfortable? I even have feet. These are footy pajamas. They're so warm and soft and cozy. But while this is my preference, it would be better for the peep if I didn't have my pajamas on. Did you see what I just did? I showed deference. My preference was to keep my pajamas on, but I took them off. So that was deference, because deference looks at what you might prefer as opposed to what I prefer. Now, another example of that, let's say we're all going to order pizza, and most people like pepperoni pizza, and so that's what we're going to order. But if it were up to me, my preference, I don't really like pepperoni. And I could be like, no, I don't want pepperoni pizza. But that wouldn't be showing deference, would it? So I would just say, okay, that's fine. And then when it's time to eat, I can just pull the pepperonis off, right? Deference, that's what's important. So I want to think about that. Deference recognizes the taste and preference of others and then respects or defers, gives in to those instead of my desires. I want to read to you from the Bible. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23, listen to what it says. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Let no one seek his own good, but the good of his neighbor. Did you hear that? There's lots of things that are okay. It's okay for me to like a different pizza besides pepperoni pizza. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's not always beneficial to do what I want. Even though what I want's not bad, it's better to think about what other people want, the good of others. That's what God wants. Deference is important in many circumstances in our lives. Let's think about at home. Many of you have a brother or sister. Well, let's pretend I like to watch football games, but I have a little sister who likes Doc McStuffins. Now, I could fight her and say, we are not watching that silly show. But deference says, okay, you can watch Doc McStuffins. What about at school? Well, <coughs> excuse me, at school, I like to talk whenever I want. But the rule of the class 
is to raise your hand before speaking. So, instead of upsetting the teacher, I show deference by raising my hand before I speak. Do you understand? Let me give you another. What about with your friends? Well, I like to play soccer, but my friends always want to play basketball. Now, I could throw a stink and be like, we're playing soccer or I'm going home. But I don't want to go home. I want to play with my friends. So deference says, play basketball instead of demanding soccer. Are you getting it? One more example. Talk about telling others about Jesus. How do you show deference when you're telling others about Jesus? Well, let's see in the Bible what Paul has to say. I'm going to get this Bible again back in 1 Corinthians, but this time we're going to be in chapter 9, starting in verse 19. This is what Paul says about deference. For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I, by all means, I might have some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I may share with them in its blessing. So you can see, Paul became all things. If somebody was weak, he became weak, so he could win the weak. He did whatever it took to win people to tell about Jesus. It wasn't about him, it was about the other people. Many of you know that I've taken three mission trips to the country of India. Three times, in 2012, in 2016, and in 2018, I took a trip to India. Now, if you remember, India is very, very far away. Here is where we live, North America, United States of America, and India is way, see, we're still going, way over, where did it go? Right there, that's how far, I couldn't even find it. So, from here to... Uh, there. That is a really long distance. Long distance. It took a long time to get there. So I even had to show deference by being willing to get on a plane because it's not my preference to be in a plane for that long of a time. But all of us went. We had a team and we knew that if we we're going to India to tell people about Jesus, it wasn't going to be about what we wanted. It was going to be about what they wanted. And that's important whenever thinking about deference in telling people about Jesus. The first way that we had to show deference was in the way that we dressed. They dressed very differently. One of the things that many Indian people wear is kurtas. See? This looks very different. You can see a kurta is sort of slit at the side. Now luckily, most of the men on our trip didn't have to wear this, but the women all had to wear kurtas. And we didn't wear shoes either, because in India you're taking your shoes off before you go inside any building or home. So it's very different. The second way that we had to show deference when we were in India was the language. Most of the people there don't speak English. They speak Hindi or Marathi in the area that we were at, and that's very different. And so if we wanted to tell them about Jesus, if we started talking in English, would they have heard or understood? No. So we had to show deference by paying a translator to talk for us. We would say it in English, and he would say it in Marathi. Very important, otherwise they wouldn't have heard a word we said. The third way was food. Food in India is very different. If you've ever been to an Indian restaurant here, you have some idea of the difference it is. But even the way they eat, they don't use forks and spoons and knives, they use their hands. And so that is very uncomfortable when you've been told all your life, don't eat with your fingers, pick up that fork. So it was challenging, but we had to show deference and eat with our hands. Another way was with money. Their money is called rupees. You can see the bright colors. It's very different, and the numbers are different, and the values are different, and so that was very confusing. But if we wanted to buy anything, we had to have rupees. We had to show deference and put our dollar bills away. Sometimes, while we were in India, the missionaries showed deference to us. We got to go to McDonald's or KFC or Subway, restaurants that we were familiar with. He also showed deference by putting us in a hotel that had air conditioning and hot water for showers. Because in India, those things aren't important, but they are important for us. So deference was happening all over the place. Why? 
so that we could tell the Indian people about Jesus. If we had gone over there saying, we're going to do it our way or no way, then nobody would have heard about Jesus. But because we showed deference, hundreds of people got to hear the message of Jesus. So deference is so important. Now, I want to demonstrate one more way to help you get this idea of how important it is to show deference instead of preference. But I'm going to need a friend for this. Well, hi, Matt. Welcome. Hi. Good to see you. So, I want to talk about the importance of elbows. Do you have an elbow? Yes, elbows are really important. If you can see, the other arm, I've rigged us up so that our elbows are no longer working. So, I want to demonstrate to help us understand deference. So, be thinking, deference. So, what I have right here is I have a treat. I have a Reese's cup for Matt, which yes. he loves, and I have three musketeers for me, which I love. And now we're going to eat it, but yeah, you only have one arm. You, this arm is gone. Okay, so now eat your treat. Here Got we it. go. Can you do it? Ugh. I can't do it. I'm hurting my I, shoulder. I know. Whew. So what's the problem here? You see that we have this delicious morsel of chocolate, but we can't eat it. Our preference is to put it in our mouth and eat it. Absolutely. But our preference has been deferred because our elbows no longer work. We oh, no. can't do it. So. If we have deference, we stop thinking about what we want and we think of the other. Oh. So if we're thinking of the other, what can we do? I can feed you. <gasps> you can feed me and I can feed you. Mm. Look at that. Oh, wow, yeah. Do you see what happened? We had to put aside what we wanted and think of the other. And Matt still got his treat. Now, he didn't get that treat, but I could easily take this and put it in his mouth which I won't do right now because he's still <laughs> chewing. But God wants us to think of others first. I want to read from the Bible to help you see this, what God wants. In John chapter 13, verse 34, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. So you can see right there, one of the greatest and most important ways that we show deference is by loving one another. I showed love to Matt by feeding him that treat. You show love to people when you think about what they need, what they want, instead of what you want. So deference is all about loving one another. Jesus said it, if you have a love for one another, people will know that you're his. And that's a good and important thing. So I share this with you today because my hope for myself and for you is that we would all show deference by loving one another, by putting aside what we want and thinking about what others want. Will you pray with me? God, I thank you for this important lesson. We live in a world where everyone is selfish and it's always me, 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 what I want, what I need. And I pray you help us to be different. Help us to be identified with Jesus by loving one another and showing deference. Jesus showed deference for his own life. He set his life aside and gave it to us because we needed forgiveness of sins. Help us to follow in the example of Jesus and love one another by showing deference. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening, friends. This was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon. Bye!